Here we go now. We haven't spoken to him in a long time. Fresh off a new hip, our pal is John Smoltz. He's going to, of course, be involved with all the broadcasting with Fox and everything else. Fox on the Big Fox tomorrow uh, with Great Britain at 9 o'clock. John, welcome. Great to have you with us here. Let's discuss it from a pitching perspective first. If you were signed and had your a huge contract and you knew it kind of upset your program in spring training, a la Verlander and Scherzer and folks like that, would you say the heck with it and still want to be involved in this? Or do you understand the idea, you know what, it's too delicate, I can't get myself hurt, let me pass. Let me hear your take on that first. Go ahead. Yeah, there, there's some contributing factors there. If you're, a, if you're a max effort guy, it's going to be hard for you to be on this roster. If you've gone a deep run in the postseason, hard to be on the roster. I think a veteran guy, it's an easier transition. On the non-max effort, hard-throwing guys can get in rhythm sooner. Uh, I had a process every time I went through spring training. It took me three weeks to get through the ramping up of, of letting it go, right? Because you don't really do – it's a whole long process. So it's a mindset and a personality, honestly, dog, that makes the difference for these guys because if you think one way – things will probably happen. So if you're worried about injury or worried about enhance this or that, then you're probably not suited for this kind of tournament because you really have to have the mindset that I'm putting on a USA uniform. It's yes, it's not truly the season, but I'm ready for it to ramp it up and get ready to get results earlier because spring training for a veteran, you're not really concerned with results. I never was. And so I think it's a mixture of reasons that put players on the team and don't put players on the team. And, you know, the guys that end up with the USA uniform, I guarantee you this, they're going to want to try to defend and win, win the title. All right, like Wainwright tomorrow, I'm not sure what his pitch count is. Normally in a spring training game, he would, you know, fool around and do some things different, experiment. He can't do that in these kind of games. So how does he approach his, say, 30, 35, whatever amount of pitches he's going to go tomorrow? Does he try to approach it like it's a regular season game? He's a big outs. Does he experiment a little bit, too, because he does want to get ready for the season? How do you handle it if you are participating as a pitcher in these games? Let me hear. Yeah, you're going to want to get outs. And Wainwright's a good example. He doesn't rely on max velocity, his ability to spin the baseball and change speeds. you got to understand, everybody's kind of in the same boat, except for the ones who've played, you know, winter ball that might have more locked in at bats and maybe more uh, have a better feel with the baseball. But I think a guy like Wainwright who can go out there and, you know, pitch to each side of the plate, he's going to be in game mode. There's no doubt about it. At the end of the day, you got to convince yourself it's not the end of the world, but you want to put your best foot forward and have a performance. There's a lot of pressure on the USA team. Let's not get, uh, you know, they definitely know that, that they have a roster that can win it. And so early on, the pressure's early to try to get going and make that uh, get out of that first phase and get to Miami. So that, there's still a lot of pressure on these guys to perform. And offensively, they should be fine. The pitchers, it just takes a while. Sometimes a guy comes in, he's locked in, he's hitting all the spots. Sometimes he has a, you know, the feel isn't there right away. Uh, how much fun is it for guys like Betts and Trout to play in the same team after watching each other from afar for their first half of their careers? Yeah, I think that's the personality and mindset that you start engaging in, right? When you think about what's different about this, then you're more apt to think, oh, I'm getting out of my routine. I don't know about this. But if you put your mind to, to, to know you're going to play with these guys in a unique, unique opportunity, it then becomes a lot of fun. You put your work in pre and post. And then when the game comes around, you start playing the game with the USA uniform entitled to try to go to the finals and win it. And I know as a veteran player, I would have loved to have done it. It just so happened there when – uh, you're at the end of your road or you're having dealing with injuries, you're probably more apt to not be part of this team. But when you get a chance to play with these guys, uh, it gets your it gets revved up. And you'll see, I mean, and that's what I'll watch for. You'll see some guys are too revved up, too anxious to hit, and they'll have to settle themselves down. And the timing, and let me tell you something, it's going to be very difficult for Mark DeRosa because he can't really deviate much. The system is set for the pitchers to pitch X amount of pitches. They can't throw any more. And there's not this flexibility to bring in any pitcher you want, given the score being what it is. It's all predetermined based on their programs. 
Yeah, so it is tricky. All right, how about the aspect of an offensive player like Betts? It is March 10th. You know, they played, what, a couple of spring training games there, of course, before they joined here. Is a hitter ready to hit on a big league level 10 days into the spring training or 10 days into March? Uh, is it? I know the pitcher isn't. How about the offensive player? Is he ready to perform like it's July on March 10th? Yeah, I've always said that the the hitters can be a little bit ahead if they do their work. The tracking a baseball and seeing the baseball at this time of the year is what they're most interested in. I, I remember interviewing uh, Miguel Cabrera about seven years ago, and I asked him, what's your process in spring training? He gave me one of the greatest answers I've ever heard. He goes, I want to get jammed. I want the ball to get deep. I want to hit it off the end of the bat. I want to experience it all so that when I get towards the end of spring training, I've seen and experienced everything I'm going to experience in the regular season. I just thought it was unique. Each guy's different. And again, I, I, I harp on the mentality and personality. If you're loose and ready and you accept what, what's about to happen, you'll be fine. But if you press and want to make things happen early, early in spring training, that doesn't mesh well with some guys. And you'll definitely see it. You'll see some guys come out of the gate, a little awkward, a little off timing. But I think this lineup, it's got such depth to it that you'll see that uh, guys will pick up for each other in the early part of this kind of tournament. Uh, somebody will get hot 100%. I, everybody loves the rules, John. I mean, you know, I heard there's going to be more singles. I mean, I had Snitker on radio. That's how I know this. He said there's going to be a lot more singles. He said you'd be surprised about the stolen bases. He said the, the, the outfielders are not going to move in to play between first and second. First of all, they don't have a glove, and you got to do it in 30 seconds, so there's going to be no shifts. So that's going to work, too. And he said the games will take 25 minutes off, and as long as there's common sense with the pitch clock, that will be superb. So he was big time in favor of it. I'm sure you got a sense of it as well. Let me hear your thoughts there. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I've been banging this drum for a long time, and I think baseball has a history of not really making many changes, which has been fine. And so you have those people holding on to the history of the game going, what are we doing? But the game just hasn't moved in a fashion that they would love to see the game go from a time. This is data. This is, this is not something we're making up. This is not an announcer going, man, the games are three hours and 45 minutes. And the players have learned to play within the system they have because the information so much. So it slows them down. They'll learn how to adjust. There'll be some tweaks. You're always going to have somebody try to take advantage or push the rule to the limit, and they'll make some adjustments in the season to try to adjust that. But I think this is going to be fantastic for a game that lost its action, that has velocity and pitching way ahead of hitting, and I think once they catch up to the idea of how to play the game a little quicker, you're going to see everything be changed philosophically on the way the game's played. If you owned a team, dog, I couldn't make you play differently. I couldn't say you've got to do this for the sake of the game. You've cracked the code. You play the game the way you want. But now if I make some rule changes, you're going to have to address that philosophically. And you're going to say, OK, here's where I can pick up an advantage. This is what I need to do and how I prepare my players to play under the rules that we have, you're going to see, I've always called it unintended consequences, and they're going to be good unintended consequences. There's still going to be left-handers that lift clean in place, try to hit the ball over the wall. But the unintended consequences are going to be hard-hit balls that are now going to find reward, base hits, and that's basically what you're talking about. Good job. Looking forward to it. You'll be in top four in the ball in your opening game. Always a pleasure. Keep in touch. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. My pleasure.